Hey folks, welcome back to this multi-purpose shop, you might say. I'm just uh, kind of completing this job for a Keith that he asked me to do a few weeks ago, but he just hasn't really had time to bring it and I hadn't really had time to get to it either. And still don't, but I'm doing it anyway. So. Basically what we were doing, and I don't know how we can see this, but just adding a cord. It's been cold and the tractor don't start good when it's cold outside, of course. So just adding a cord and a block here so we can plug it in at night and uh, whenever it uh, keeps the coolant and the engine warmed up so it'll start up real quick. You never know what you might need to do, especially in the wintertime with the tractor, you know. Uh, for somebody that's stuck or go move some hay for the animals, whatever, whatever the job is, you got to do it. You got to be able to start. So that's all I'm doing. I'm finishing this up. It was actually a really big job, and I don't guess I'll go into all of these details. But you know, it's at the back of the block here, right below the exhaust manifold. So, you know, pipes like the turbo. Oil drain pipe was right in the way. Uh, fuel line that, that supplies the uh, fuel injection pump. It's a decent, of course. Uh, that was right in the way because you couldn't get to tight enough fitting and all that. So the next step was how do you get? It had a big plug in the back that had a big 5 8 hex, you know, Allen wrench hole place that you've got to. Take the old plug out to put the block heater in. All right, well, that was a hassle. So I didn't think that I have a 5 8 Allen. It's not even at work. And if I did, you can't get it in there anyway. Probably not very well anyway. So I had to go over to the lathe in the mill, mainly the mill in this case. And I had some 4140 steel, and I was lucky enough to have just yesterday got in those uh, 5C pilot blocks in that I was able to build that tool. And I'll show it to you right quick so you don't completely not understand what I'm talking about. It's this All right, the tool I made is this. Now, I know it doesn't look like much, right? Can you see it? It's just a hex, hex shape. It's like a piece of an Allen wrench, but it's 5 8 16 millimeters, actually, when I make it. But uh, it's actually 5 8 I had to kind of grind it down a little bit or sand on it a little to make it fit in there. I wanted a good tight fit because, you know, I didn't want to strip out because that thing was tight. But this is the tool I used to make it. See, I've got a piece of this steel in here. You just put it in the collet. I'm sure some of you have used these, but anyway, it's got a nut attachment that tightens that collet down real tight. You put that in your mill vise, so you just figure out, you know, what you need. In this case, you need to take a six. This is three quarter stock, so that's six eighths, right? We need a five eighths. That's taking one eighth off the material. That ain't much. So basically, I took about 56, 57 thousandths off of each side. So you mill that side, turn it, mill that side, turn it, mill this side. Of course, I had more sticking out because, you know, it was that long. Mill it, turn it, mill it, turn it until you're done. And then went over to the new, something else I was lucky to have just got. Since I don't have a good bandsaw to cut this stuff, and you could. Chucked in the lathe and parted off if you want to, but I've got a new uh, carbide. I wish I could show it, but it's way on the other side. It's just a Rage 2 Evolution cutoff saw, but it's got the carbide blade in it. It's done a beautiful job on that thing. I didn't touch it up. That's how smooth it looks. I don't know that that thing's focusing on that, but it's a really nice, smooth, cuts it like butter. So. Anyway, that's the tool I had to build. Of course, on one end, you just put a socket on that. 
I had a long 3H drive socket I put on there to turn it on. That took me, I mean, I know it's a little old tool and it don't look like much, but that's about an hour job or better to build, even to build that. So uh, that wastes a lot of time. Even after I got that, it's really tough to get it tight. That's what I was saying. I had to take all these pipes off. And even then, it was, you can't get here because of the lift. So, you know, it's a 1 and 3 sixteenths. This is not it. There's another lock nut on that's an inch and a quarter. But you can't get this between the here and there. So I had to take a small, I was going to have to build a wrench for that, but I, I got by with some really good, I'm rambling, I know, but these are the best pliers you can buy. I don't know if anybody has any. They're called Nipex. There's all different sizes of them. These are, I would guess, about an eight inch. I don't know. Um, those get a real good grip. You know, they'll fit the hex in there pretty good. I tighten it as tight as I can get with that. And then I was able to take this little. Everything worked out nice lately. The things that I bought that I just thought I might need sometime, even something as stupid as this little small pipe wrench here that I got from Harbor Freight. Just a little eight inch pipe wrench. After I got that, I was able to get that in there on that hex and then take a big wrench as leverage. It just barely fit it in there, you know, and just take, took a long time, I'm just saying. Uh, Anyway, I don't want to ramble about that. I'm just going to mainly testing the camera and the audio here. Nobody, chance nobody will ever see this video, but uh, I'm mainly testing this for my own use. And I got to get off of this and on to another job here. And there's plenty more jobs outside that I need to get in here. So it's a nice day. It's uh, roughly 70 degrees outside today, uh, it's December the 11th, 2016. And it's a uh, We've had some 20 degree days in the last week that make it a little bit harder to get the shop warmed up enough to feel like doing something. And then today I've got the door open, so it's real nice in here. I'm going to try to get some things done. I'm going to let this run a little while. I may or may not be yakking. I probably will. I can't keep my mouth shut by the time. But um, I'm just putting the pipe on. I'll have to feel cool enough. We'll get this out of here, I hope, pretty quick.
All right, good. Try them. Square boot. I'm not going to clap this plan. Where it goes on the head, it's just a, got a hose connection there. Put this to every five sixteenths. Head on that one plan. Do we have something to stop it? Correct. Because this mic is off launch software for this camera, but I'm looking at a screen that's about a less than a fourth of the size of the screen, so I can see what you're seeing very well. But basically, you're just supposed to leave the cord hanging out here where they can get to it and where it won't, of course, get tangled up and in that thing and get screwed up or something. So, I think it's pretty secure there and it's easily accessible. Probably best to leave it hanging back down there so it, you know, so much feet or anything can't grab it. And anyway, that's a matter of picking up tools. I showed a video some of this here because I don't have a truck and I really didn't know if I was going to be able to get it done this weekend either. I think you need to this pressure and I need to get out of here because I've got a guy's pickup over here that needs water pump, I think. I think. Now he's got to have to get to work in the morning and i got to get on that. That's going to be, you know, it may take a few hours to get that done. So the day will be gone by then. And of course, I've still got Keith's boat back there that he's got time to spin on. And let me look out here. I think there's. There's two trucks out here. I got to get in here. Plus a Kubota utility diesel uh, vehicle that needs to be serviced. And it looks like a pain in the butt to get there. So I'm going to try to pick it up on this lift. Change oil, fuel filters, check everything over for him. And I think he's planning on having that this weekend. And I don't know that I'm going to get that on the truck. Also, my son's girlfriend's car. Uh, we checked the heater on it yesterday and he had to run to get a blender wax sweater that we got to put that in today. You know, there's never, of course, football games are on in there and I've got them playing. I'll have to, I'm bad about going in there and checking on that and sitting down a minute and uh, getting lazy. So i got to be careful with that. So I'm going to see if I can get the coolant poured back in this. Let's get it started up. I may let this run. I know it's boring just watching me put up to the thing, but just checking the camera mainly and telling you. Let's see if we can edit some of that off, but I don't know. Uh, you know, you got to fast forward but, or skip or whatever you want to do on this. I, just, I know it's not very exciting, but just showing a little bit of what, what's going on and how I'm trying to get rigged up to. Uh, Make some YouTube videos. If I had a good imagination, you know, we might make a series of what's going on in this multi-purpose shop we call LC Repairs, kind of, on Facebook and uh, in general. It's really just my own workshop, you know, and if someone asked me, hey, can you put a block heater on my tractor, or can you, you know, i got some machine tools now, so can you build me a little something? I got welding equipment, woodwork equipment, mechanic equipment, of course, because that's what I've done for 30 years or so, and uh, kind of like to get away from that if I could. But chainsaw, I've got tools to sharpen chainsaw, uh, chain, build chain, repair saw, you know, steel and echo is my two favorite ones to work on. I don't like working on craftsmen or junk, you know, that ain't really meant to work on. It's just, it's really harder to work on it ain't worth putting the effort into because 
if you really charge the time it takes, you could go buy a brand new saw or something. But occasionally I do that. People I know, like I'm not advertising this. I'm only doing what someone contacts me and asks me to do if I can. And I'm I'm so busy I don't really want to take on anymore. But if it's in a line of machine work or welding jobs, maybe even redoing trailers or trailer wiring, axle repairs, just something different, I, I would rather be doing that, honestly. Anyway, I'm rambling again, so here we go. Let's get this out of here. I think what I'll do so it's not quite as boring, I'm going to change the angle on this camera. And I don't know, you're going to see a bunch of jacking around. So I didn't want to cut this off because I haven't edited any video yet. And we'll see if I can do this without wiggling things too bad. So bear with me just a few minutes, or a few, maybe less than a minute, hopefully. I want to set up in front of the tractor and because I'm just filling up the cooling system right now so let's see what happens here of course you can look around the shop a little while I'm moving if you want but it's not really exciting it it's really dirty right now so here we go you're gonna see any way to set this down Yeah, the light's going to be right in your eyes, isn't it? We'll just see what happens here. I'll, I think I'll shut that door so there ain't quite as much light coming in.
Alright, I've got most of it in there. Can't see the monitor here, sorry. <coughs> Gonna get some more antifreeze here. Sorry, this is boring, but I, I really am just about done here. I'm just wrench my hands up nasty antifreeze. Well, I'm drying my hands a minute. We ever did get a YouTube channel started? You know, I think that would be fun. I said I like to watch other people's channels, and I spend way too much time doing that. I stay up too late watching them. I, you know, I don't have time during the day, so I, <laughs> after supper time, I sit down in my chair in here and I, I watch Adam Booth and James Green and Tom Lifton. You know the crew. You know this is the machinist crew, but. I really like to watch uh, Good Grief. We'll get free. Brian. I'm not. I guess his last name is Block. Maybe he's got a funny channel. It's like B. Uh, I don't know if it's B B L O E something. Anyway, he's one of the, in the group. Uh, of course, NYC C N C is uh, John Saunders is really. Really exciting to watch him. He's full of energy. Wished I had the energy that he has, but he's a really sharp guy on computerized stuff. And uh, his buddy, uh, John Grimmo, and I like to watch some of him and his brothers got a knife. Uh, CNC shop building knives and things. It's kind of interesting. Uh, those are hard work to kid. Um, I mean, there's a lot of others. I'm not trying to leave anybody out. I'm just saying I'll watch all of those. You know, there's a guy in the Boston area that's kind of neat to watch. Of course, Mr. P, uh, he's really interesting. He's a sharp, smart guy, you know, that's already done his career and he's just tinkering around in his basement machine shop. He's a super, super smart guy. And I like to watch him. But some of the, my interest is a little more towards the machining with a little more modernized equipment than what, say, some of the, and I'm not to say it's not good. It's just whatever you're interested in, you know, kind of like the Bridgeport Mill. Here I am rambling again. No doubt the Bridgeport Mill is an excellent tool, excellent machine, and was in the 40s and 50s and I don't know that they still make them, but most of them, in my opinion, have a lot of wear on them. And uh, you're going to spend, I don't feel comfortable spending that kind of money on something that I'm going to have to work on. I mean, I repair things all the time. I really don't want to repair something before I can use it. So, 
Same way. Sorry, I was going away that track. I'm sure you've seen this before, but in the instance here, I've got a new. Probably can't see good. Uh, 13 by 40 Grizzly lathe. That's excellent. I don't have any issues with it. It's it's for the money a good tool. I realize it's not a production machine. It probably could be worn out if you used it too much. I don't know. Uh, I've got a my mill is at this point fine for what I'm using it for. Yeah, go ahead and laugh. It's fairly small. It's not a mini mill. It's a SIG, I think they call it 2.7X or something like that. It's just a little bigger than a mini. And I got this crazy little 7 by 16 mini lathe that I don't even use anymore. It's a joke, but honestly. When you're using equipment like a real a real lathe and you try to come back and use that, mm, it's, it's not very fun. So uh, that's for sale if anybody wants to get in and learn. It's an excellent tool to, to learn on. If you get good at running that uh, that mini lathe, running a bigger lathe will be simple as pie. That one is you have to really take things slow, easy. It's light. You're going to have chatter if you're not careful. You know, you can learn really well on those. And I'm still learning. I'm not saying that I've already learned all you can learn. I don't think you can ever learn it all, but I learned enough to where I can feel comfortable running a lathe in my own shop to do things that I need to do. Buying tools constantly make things better and easier. So if anybody's thinking about buying one of those, that's the top of the line that they sell at Little Machine Shop. That's their biggest mini lathe that they offer. What's really called a mini lathe. They're not, they build, I think, a few that's a 12 or 36. Or, not sure about that. They make one that's maybe a 10 or 11 inch swing that's they all, but that's not a mini lathe. That's a mini lathe. Okay. I've seen people call bigger lathes a mini lathe, and they're they're small, but they're not mini. You know, that lathe weighs about 100 pounds. That's a mini lathe. That one weighs about 13, 1400 pounds, depending on I guess what's on it. But and it's a small lathe. Honestly, that's considered a small lathe. Had a booth, and Brian. Uh, you know, they have big stuff, you know, something like in uh, that one that Tom, uh, my word, I'm sorry, I can't think of his name. He has a big 16 by 60, I think it is, uh, South Bend that he's restoring. That's a pretty big lay, even though, like I said, I'm a little more towards the modernized stuff that's, you know, that old stuff. I don't think the spindle speeds are quite as fast. If you needed them, you don't normally need them. I'm just saying they're not quite as modernized uh, to me and, and simple to use as what the new stuff is. And, uh, of course, you get into higher end brands, it would be better than, what, of course, what Grizzly is. I'm not saying Grizzly's, you know, a top brand, but I'm just saying it works perfect for what I need right now. So, and as I get this stuff paid for and get I'm able to. I'd like to add a lot more machines in here. So uh, I've got a nice Miller MIG welder that's pretty new, and I don't have a, any other welders other than a DC, you know, a portable uh, Lincoln welder that's fairly new as well for outdoor stuff. But I'm rambling on. I told you we're going to get this out, so let's get it done. Keep this air hose out of the way. Oh, not to ramble anymore, but what I was trying to get to, oh, I'm cutting the get off here with this. If we do a channel, anybody has any interest in it, you know, it's just showing kind of a little bit of what I do. Pretty much seven days a week around here. I come home at lunch on my lunch break and I. Actually, that's when I do most of my work here, and I probably won't be videoing a lot of that because I'm in a hurry because I got to get back to work. On weekends, I'm more messing around, maybe make a video, fiddle around with some other jobs I need to be working on. But what I was trying to tell you is if there's an interest, and if this ends up on YouTube,
put some suggestions of something you may want to see or you want to see outside the building. You want any? I built this building myself with my dad's help. And uh, you know, if you have any questions about how you go about building a building like this, I think I understand how to build this a metal building fairly well. I, we have a lot of wood construction up front here in the man cave, but I don't enjoy woodworking much. But metalworking is fairly simple. Uh, if you have any questions on anything, or anything you want to see, if you want to see uh, something done, or, you know, I'm doing a lot of different jobs all the time that to me ain't a big deal. I get tired of messing with it. But most of it's mechanic work, and I'm trying to do some machine work, but if you have any questions or comments or you want to see something, just suggest it. I'm open to suggestions. I'm just doing it for something fun. I don't have much fun. I'm always working. So if you want to see something fun or, or, or maybe how we do something, I'm not one to tell you something I don't know. If I don't know, I'm willing to research it and, and maybe together we'll figure it out, okay? Let's get this out of here. I'm not an everyday tractor, but, but I do seem to work on quite a few around here. Uh, I'd rather not do the major work. Uh, I do mostly maintenance type things. And uh, this John Deere, I didn't ever tell you, is a model. Uh, it's called a 5103. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I mean, I would say that number stands for about 51 horsepower. That's usually how they work those models. It, it's four wheel drive with big wheels on the front, so it looks like a pretty good machine. I, I don't know, I'm not really a John Deere fan necessarily. I just, uh, we have, uh, I've got an older rag tractor, like a 45,000 diesel, and my, dad, and my brother has a new model, and a little small, I forget the model, but about a 40 horse. Uh, four wheel drive that works excellent for easy to move and it's got a lot of power. I pulled 12, 12 foot tandem fly with it easily, no problem in four wheel drive. You know, it'll pull just as well as my 60, uh, it's about a 63 horse, 45,000. It is not four wheel drive, of course. So, the four wheel drive makes a huge difference. Let's get this out of here. Oh yeah, what I was, I'm a little bit worried that since I had the fuel line off, we may have got air in the system. It may not start up real easy. I'm going to see if I can pump that little pump a little bit first, just to be sure. I think we're probably, it probably will start and work okay. We'll see. I just pumped it a little bit. It felt like it was something. 
Well, we got it done, I guess. I'm going to let it run a little bit out here. You hear how it's kind of a little bit mad at me, like the deuce is there when it's cold. It's not cold in here, but um, because, I'd like to say, we have a little bit of air in the system from having to take that fuel line off. And, uh, anyway, it looks like it worked out fine. And, uh, I gotta get some other jobs done. I'm gonna see if I can edit some of this. I don't know. I'm gonna try to throw the grass away. Uh, let's see. Just for the fun of it, it ain't very fun. Of it. The next job I'm looking at, and I don't like working on dodges. I don't like dodges. I'm a Ford Chevrolet man, but this is a friend of mine that asked me to do it, and I'm going to try to get in here and uh, something else that I don't know much about. I've never took one of these apart, but uh, I've got the water pump here. I did a pressure test on this. I hadn't took it off yet. I just really take the fan out. I need to go get one of my tools to do that, but it looked like to me, somebody may know this, here's the gasket that goes in this, you know, this little maze in here. When this was on the truck, it looked like to me it was just leaking all around the gasket surface. Even on both sides and almost all the way around it. That's a little bit scary because this actually sits on the truck like this thing. I'm a little bit concerned that it couldn't be maybe a timing cover that's somehow leaking where it can get. I don't see how it could run down both sides. I was told by someone else that these are common about maybe head gaskets leaking coolant. I don't see any head gaskets leaking so far. It don't look like it to me. That's just what I got to do today and hopefully I can get this done. And Jared already told me that. 
just put the water pump on. Don't worry about it. If it's something else, we'll worry about that because he's got a lot of miles on and it's never had a water pump anyway. So anyway, thanks for watching. If we ever make this, please subscribe and whatever you're supposed to do there. And uh, appreciate any comments or help or anything else you want to put forth.